this simple linear regression videos we talk about a special case of linear regression which is called a regression when x is a binary variables or we call this dummy variables next we talk about the concept of heteroscedasticity and homoscedasticity basically the difference between them is the conditional variance is constant and the other is varies so um, given this different type of variance, you, you will need to use different estimations or you need to use a different estimator to estimate the populations. So let's get started. The first concept is called a regression when x is a dummy variable. So binary variable can also be, can also be called as dummy variables, which means the value of x can be either taken to be one or zero maybe sometime we are talking about whether the gender will affect the wage rate and we are going to see whether there is a gender discrimination so for some variable that cannot be quantified we can, we can then quantify the variables using the proxy of dummy variable setting it either be zero or one in gender case assume that male equal to one and if the person is female we set it equal to zero then we can also do the regression and later we will take a look of the interpretation of data one so similar to the gender maybe we are going to see the income difference between urban and rural again we can set one to be urban and zero to be rural so so long and so forth after that, we can still construct a model y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 di plus ui. D here stands for the binary variables. So, what are the interpretations of the beta 1? So, if you want to take a look of the meaning of beta 1, you need to do two steps. First, you need to calculate the expected value of the y given the dummy variables is equal to 1. So if you substitute di equal to 1 here, you will get beta 0 plus beta 1 plus ui. Next, you can calculate the expected value of, of y, given di is 0. What you will get is beta 0 plus ui, because any, anything multiplied by 0 is 0. Then you can do a subtraction here. You will see that, oh, beta 0 minus beta 0 is 0. Ui minus Ui is Ui. What is remaining is just beta 1. How about the left hand side? The left hand side is expected value of Y given Di is 1 minus expected value of Y given Di is 0. That means beta 1 is representing the change in the average number of Y. If this Di increase from 0 to 1. So let's take a look at an example. Say you are a researcher and you find that the wage weight is somehow equal to some constant plus 2.15 times the dummy variable male. So for the dummy variable male, if you are male, this is equal to 1. And if you are female, this is equal to 0. So what does this 2.15 mean? Okay, so this 2.15 means is that you need to do two steps. First, calculate the expected wage if you are male. So this is equal to 12.52 plus 2.15 times 1. And what is the expected wage if you are a female? This is equal to 12.52 times 2.150. Right? Then you do the subtraction and you find that the difference is exactly 2.15. Therefore, this beta 1, 2.15 stand for the difference between the wage of male and female. If you are male, your wage is 2.15 more. So this is the way for us to quantify the qualitative data. So we use the dummy variables to quantify these concepts. Okay. Next, we are going to talk about the homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity concept. For heteroscedasticity, we mean that the 
conditional variance ui given xi is not a constant for homoscedasticity that means the conditional variance given xi is a constant so what it means for homoscedasticity that means no matter what is the value of x no matter small or big the variance of the error term is still the same while for the heteroscedasticity one it means that when x increase ui may increase or decrease this is not a constant so if you want to draw it in a diagram for the whole one that means no matter what is the value of x the spread of the data if you draw the probability distribution and you will see that oh they are, they are always the same but for the hectoral one so it means that when x increase their distribution may be like this so their variance is actually changing so what is why we care about homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity because in different cases we need to estimate the beta one hat we we want to estimate the beta one so we need to put different error term in estimating the beta one so to be more specific by last video we remember we recall that the variance of the beta one is in this form 1 divided by square root of n derived by the standard deviation of this xi minus ex times ui derived by the of x so if the error term is heteroscedasticity so how can we estimate this error term okay so if we can estimate the, this term by calculating sum from i equal to 1 to n times xi and we use x bar to estimate the expected value of x in the population and square it how can we estimate the residual the error term we wish we wish you use the residual to estimate okay then of course in sample we need to divide by 1 over n minus 2 here it is not equal to n minus 1 but equal to n minus 2 because we have two estimator to estimate so if you don't know what i'm saying you can go back to the video three to take a look so for the denominator we can estimate the variance by the variance formula xi minus x bar to the square okay this is the way to estimate the standard deviation no the standard error of beta one hat if the error is heteroscedasticity if the error is homoscedasticity, what should we do? So let's do it one by one, step by step. Okay. So if the error term is homoscedasticity, that means the error term given xi has a constant variance. So the first step I want to take away the effect of the error and given x so we use the law of iterate expectation so this is equal to expected value of x i minus e x the first term and the second term i insert the expected value so here expected value of ui squared given xi which is a constant here since this is a constant i can take out from the expression of the expected value and put it at the left hand side what we get is variance so this sigma square and take the square root f this becomes sigma divided by square root of n what is remaining at the right hand side this is the variance of xi right variance of xi then you take the square root and this becomes the standard deviation. Standard deviation derived by the variance is just 1 divided by the standard deviation of xi. So we can estimate this by calculating 
the sum of residual square and take the square root derived by the sample variance formula. Okay, so we care about this because we need to use different estimates. Estimators to estimate the beta 1 hat.